Hey. Kaya, baby. What's going on? Nice to see you up in Thank here. Thank you, too. Yes. So I've been seeing your music and you doing performances and your acting mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. But I want to know where you're from. Queens, Queens, South Side Jamaica, Queens, and it's crazy. And it's super crazy. <laughs> so what was that like growing up? Like, um, I grew up all over Queens, really. So I grew up different part of Queens, there's different areas. But my family originally is from 40 Projects. My grandmother's still there for like Shout out to 40 years. Projects, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy, not much really to say. So I saw a lot. And, and I saw a lot growing up. So you was, you, would you say that you was going through some trials and tribulations? Yeah, definitely. I was from place to place. At a point in time, I was in a shelter, you know. So going through things like that and having to get on your feet and seeing your family having to suffer, or seeing your mother having to suffer, just go go through a lot. So I was, I was, I did my little sentence I had. So a lot, of, I went through a lot, really. But I don't think it, like, fade you enough because you was athletic. Mm -hmm. Like, you would play basketball and everything, right? Yeah. So what was your position? Uh, first it was point guard, then it was shooting guard. So you, you bringing it. Yeah. Like, you want to play me? Like, we can go. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. no more. I got a dust up on my skills, but that was years ago. Yeah. yeah. Like, did you want it, like, has aspirations to go to the WNBA or? Um, When I was, like, a kid, yeah, I wanted to be... Because when you're growing up in certain parts of the neighborhood, it's not, uh, for females, it's not that many females that's going to be on your block that play ball. Like, if you a dude, all your homies going to come out, like, yo, meet me at the park, we about to play ball. But when you're a female, you got, you're playing with all the guys. If you're nice, you're playing with all the guys, you know? So it's not a lot of females for me to play with. Then so I always wanted to be like, oh, so I'm going to be the first girl in the NBA. Watch, watch. But then when I got older and playing different leagues, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, nice with going there. through all the trials and tribulations of your life, with was uh, being athletic or playing basketball an outlet for you to, you know, turn those negative energies into something positive? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because it was like an escape. And I had a good coach, Coach, coach Bossity. I will never forget her. She always made... Like she disciplined us so well, and she always made sure we were staying out of trouble. We had we had journals to do, like how we felt, what our week consisted of, and if we didn't have it by practice, we had to do freaking suicides. And so, that's dope because you yeah. had to write, and and that's a form of expression. Did that carry over into you doing music? Um, I, it paved the way. It did help to you know writing out how I felt. Eventually, turned into writing, composing songs or whatever. Cause I did. I found one of my old books from years ago, when I had anger management, <laughs> and we had to write every day. And my entries are so stupid. Like I was like, y'all was so immature, and ignorant. Cause I write stupid things like oh, I had a bacon, egg, and cheese today, and my goal for the week is to not cut class and go to class. But I that's just don't a good be feeling thing. like it. And then it'd be like, but I'm going to a party later. <laughs> and it was it was stupid stuff. It was mad crazy. I saved it. I saved it. And I could tell that you're, you know, lyrically gifted. Like, that's something that you was, was doing, you know, because it carries into the, your music, like your punchlines and how you formulate the concept to what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. I, I see it. But then it's like, so, I how, how you say it? Like, it's, it's witty. Like, you, you got that wit with it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, so, I put my character in my music a lot. I'm yeah. very silly, so. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> A lot of times I'll have songs like this bars or I throw something funny or, or silly into my, my music. So what made you fall in love with hip hop? Just the the feeling that you get from making a, a good song and then you just like, this is mine, like this is my I made this. So and then other people feeling it too and relating to it and, and it be they scapegoat, they outlet. It's a good feeling, like you know, you you helping someone but with, what, what, get through their day. What was one of the rappers that inspired you to to be like, man, like, what was the song that made you fall in love? Like, this is the culture. What was the song? Who was um, the artist? Eminem. Really? Yeah. I sit back with this bag of zigzag and this weed and maybe that, that song right there. Is yeah, that, that, that just did it all for you. Yeah, because he was, like, sick of everybody. The industry, everything. He was people bashing him, the freaking MTV or whoever bashing him. 
And that song was just like a you gonna curse on you? Yeah. Oh, it was just like, I don't Be give yourself. a fuck. We keep it a hundred here. Yeah, it was just like, I don't care anymore. I don't give a fuck. And I was like, yeah, that's what I need to hear. Like I didn't really grow up on hip hop, so all those other cats that was really like I don't know. I can't relate to that. I was mad young, but that song I can relate to because it was so like what I was don't some give of the songs either. What was some of the songs that you grew up to listening to? What what genre was um, it? Um R and B. I, I have a lot of aunts, so I grew up around R and B. And what was like one of the things that you would hear walking in your house? All the Saturday time, oh, Mary J. Blige. So I love Mary J. Blige. My and life, like, yes. Yeah. That was my joint too. Um yeah. Share my world was my favorite Mary J. Blige album. Yeah. Um Ashanti, my aunt would play Ashanti over and over and over and over. But I grew up like my marriage at Blige was Keisha Cole, so. Okay. But being young and little, that's all my aunts would play, like SWV and Total and stuff. But I really didn't listen to like SWV and Escape because they was really lovey dovey songs and I was too young to even know what that was. But marriage at Blige just had a swag and a, and a aunt to her. Just, it wasn't so soulful and, you know, like gloomy. It was like. I don't care. I don't need you. I'm married to blood. Like I, I like that was my aunt in my head. Yeah, I'm married. Yeah, I think she that's mine too. I think that's everybody's aunt. Like, yeah, oh, I'm married. Too. <laughs> I feel like I know her. <laughs> Me just too. Do her music. <laughs> Me too. Like, I'd be like, oh, we're married, Mary, really? <laughs> <laughs> that nigga ain't shit. Like that nigga. Yeah, that's my aunt Mary right there. So you started out being in the group. Is that true? Yeah, team might work. Okay, so how did that formulate? Did you meet them in high school? Yeah, they, um, me and Hits, um, we in the same hood from 40. And this one, I was like starting to rap. And I was like, yo, I can rap. Because people would tell me, like, no, you really rap. Like, you should take it serious. So I hit him up for his opinion because he was rapping. Like, he was the only dude around my age at the time that was spitting. Like, everybody else was old. All the other cats was older, like Victor Moan and T.L. You know, they was way older than me. Hitch was like a couple years older than me. And he was like, oh, let me, let me hear what you got. So we went over, I went over his crib. And our other homeboys was there. We were chilling, my cousin was writing. We had a session, he picked a beat, we wrote to it. He was like, all right, we're gonna go lay it down. Now that was a different experience. Like, cause I never recorded anything, I just went right, so. I had probably did like 150 takes on that first, wow. <laughs> on that one verse. But once I knocked it out, it started to become a little, I started realizing that when you write, if you're not rapping to the beat, and then when you spit it, it's totally different. You got to take words out, yeah. add words in, substitute words for other words. So I got better over time, but yeah, shout out to Team Lightwork, that's why. So I how, didn't you, did you branch, was it like a conflict or? What, it wasn't what the group. It wasn't a conflict. It was like I said at that time. I really was doing music for fun. I didn't want to be really a rapper, which is you know a neighborhood thing. We was hood celebrities. Everybody knew Team Light Work. We was doing parties. We was doing bowling events. We was doing. Yeah, I was just about to ask. Was everything you doing showcases like, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. We had a show out of college. I don't remember what college it was, but I remember that was my first performance at a party, and people was feeling it, but. At the, at the end of the day, I would rather like be outside and be in a studio and making music. And after a while, when I really did want to make music and I would bring forth ideas, it was like my ideas sometimes would get pushed to the side or it, it was more, it was three males. It became four males and one female. So it was like, all right, I'm dominant, I'm outnumbered. And certain songs I would get on or they would start having songs. I'd be like, when y'all do this? I'm like, oh, y'all do that? So after a while, I was like, ah. So let's just, it, it didn't just work out. Yeah. Safe to say. Yeah. So, and then you moved forward. Yeah. And then... we, we always still cool. Like, we still was doing music. Um, Flip, I don't know if you know Queen's Flip. No, I never You know. don't know Queen's Flip? The guy that be acting crazy in the car when he driving, he be ripping shirts and whatnot. And he's like, um, <laughs> oh my gosh. What did he say, big fella? No, that's not him. Nah, but you probably seen him, but he was doing, like, he was the Queen's go to guy for Get Light songs. Like how Webstar had Harlem on Smash. Yeah. Flip was making Queen's versions Get Light. So me well, and Queen's like, were putting me on. Yeah. I appreciate we started that. doing um, songs with him, and he started getting his buzz going with his songs, and me and him got a real tight bond. And that's when he introduced me to Ox, because Ox asked about me. And he was like, yo, who's sure? Like, she nice. Like, I feel like she need growth. And that's what the thing was. I was starting to take it a little more serious. And they were still playing around with, like, you know, doing it for the girls. And just wanted to be in a party. So I went to Ox, and he was more of a, he spit. Like, I was just doing silly get light stuff. Like, oh, one plus one is two. Tie my shoe. Like, stupid stuff like that. But Ox was like, nah. 
I'm gonna bring. Uh, I mean, a I big can see daddy. because your delivery is amazing. Like you come and you know that you have something to say. Like, mm-hmm. and I appreciate that as far as listening Thank to hip hop and everything. Like seriously. Mm-hmm. So then you came out with your mixtapes, right? Mm-hmm. Like. Like, what inspired you to do it alone? Like, you got with Ox and everything. Yeah. So, did they hone that? Did they help produce the, the mixtapes um, and everything moving forward? The My first mixtape, uh, damn, what was it called? I don't remember the name of my first mixtape. Oh, The Rough Draft, The Rough Draft. Boom, there it goes, The Rough Draft. That was when I was with Ox. He was with Self, and they had Self as music group. And Self had asked about me. DJ Self? Yeah. Self had, um, Ox had put out a mixtape, The Street Print. And it was me, him, um, another dude, Melly, Dust, a couple other dudes from Queens. They had Queens the Movement with Not Lex, um, Vic Damone, and Landlord from Shadyville. So basically, it was like people from different, because Queens, I don't know if y'all know, but Queens no, is divided. Queens well, is divided. divided, but y- y- y'all come so, with it with uh, music. Yeah, like y'all queens yeah. play a major figure in hip hop. Yeah, and um, and the fact that you brought up DJ Self, it makes sense how you did mm-hmm. the Gwen and th- that. Yeah, because it was see how it all just it's kind of nice hearing the backdrop. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I like doing interviews because it's kind of cool to know how the things formulated and and made something so you was doing Gwen and Fest mm-hmm. and you had by then you had like another mixtape out after the rough draft yeah i had put another mixtape out to whom i may concern um that wasn't under selfish music group like the rough draft was my only thing under selfish music group after those like my two years was up with them i decided to just like do my own thing because it was just too much going on so it was not to discredit self or buck or anything, cause they like my first mixtape is a lot of old school beats or songs I never even heard of. So I had to do a lot of research and background homework on real hip hop and everything. So that kind of really constructed me into bettering myself as an artist. And, yeah, cause you mature. And, like, um, like I was like I was saying, your delivery, you mature. Like you real seasoned. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of you know um, up and coming female artists that you know I see. I, w- I had the privilege to to hear their music and stuff. They don't have that. But that's what I'm saying. You're witty. Like the way you mm-hmm. come with it is kind of different. Kind of mature. Like Thank you've you. been. Yeah. <laughs> I see that. And then you was on Love and Hip Hop too. <laughs> yeah. You was raggedy too that. with them. <laughs> nah, I wasn't. He wasn't raggedy. throwing chairs and Nah, I just wigs. did my saying. Got off the stage. Got off it. It was up out of there. Yeah. Short and simple. simple. That's it and that's all. I and came then that. it seems like you like being in front of the camera too because you've done Pray Before You Eat, mm-hmm. which is Queens. Shout out to Luke yes. Steffens and Vibes and Industry Unlocked. Mm-hmm. We had um, Haitian Jack and Provolone P up in here yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Are you sorry? Yeah, How I did? I did good. Yeah. I did a good job. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so tell me what that's like, like being on set and was doing that and stuff like that. Um, I love it. As you get to be try different roles out like my in part three i haven't seen people i'm like oh yeah they shooting that i was behind the scenes it's not even day. just shooting like people think i'm really gonna be shooting people the whole movie now there's different scenes where you really gotta act and i was shocked at myself that i was able to pull the scene off that i did so how did that come about you being in the web series what pray before you eat um luke is real good friends with my um stepfather and besides that the main character keisha mm-hmm. me and her i knew we knew each other since junior high school so when she was promoting it as a regular web series, I was like, yo, I want, I want to be in this because I could see myself being in it. They were just promoting it. It was going to be a web series. Her and my homegirl, Taja Nae, was doing it. She was like, yeah, I'm going to let Luke know. Like, come to the meeting, whatever. But it ended up being a, um, a four-part web series movie. Mm-hmm. So after that, I spoke to Luke, and he was like, we're going to find a way to tie your character in. And they just threw me in real quick in the first one while I'm friends with Coco, who's friends with Annie. Mm-hmm. Then the second part, it built, and the third part, it just, it just keeps building. Like, my character just keeps building. So that's how that came about. So shout out to Luke and, and Yeah, Keisha. shout out to Vibes and, and Industry Unlocked. Definitely, the spot. And strictly the... You ever went the, to a brunch there? Yeah, I was yeah. there the last brunch. Mm-hmm. Um, they were having a showcase there that night, too. Yeah, uh, they the last one. Yeah, and then I went to the behind the scenes, I think, a week before that. I was, they were shooting in Queens and Jamaica in the, in the house. Okay, yeah, yeah. I forgot the address right there, but they invited me to come up. I got some pictures, too. I don't know. Check the Instagram. I should have had them up here. My bad, y'all. But, yeah, we was behind the scenes, live at location. So, what you come, You got Peter Griffin out now, yes. too. And is that going to be a part of a mixtape or an album? Because that's a new thing now. now people I don't know. Out with albums. 
I don't know. I, at this point, I really like I'm having so many songs. Like every time I make a song, I'm like, this is the next song I'm gonna make, put out. Then I make another song after. I'm like, I don't know. I'm gonna have to put this one out. So I'm just gonna really, really work Peter Griffin because it's a. I feel like it's like a great song, and just keep built, making songs. And when the time come, I might put out an EP. Or I might put out like a mixtape. But nothing either. is guaranteed right no, now. Not at right this now. moment. No, not right now. Because I really gotta push. This, like my last couple of records, I was pushing it. But I wasn't really pushing it. Now I really have like a, a good dance song, a feel good song, a club record. So I'm really gonna push it, push it, push it. All right. Push well, we're gonna we're gonna listen to that Peter Griffin when we riding out. But we almost at a closing time, and I gotta get some bars from you. Can Let's I get some it. bars from you? Yeah. Yes. We shot. <laughs> That's my new new voice. Am I saying it right? <laughs> Rashad. Come on, Rashad. <laughs> <laughs> That's that Nunu, right? Does that sound like a Yeah. Nunu, Laura London. You need I say, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> what beat is that? Yellow Mercy Alago, double floor on the condo. Money I get a prano when praying to see tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Bars! Didn't I tell you? That delivery is super nothing, real, nothing, super nothing. real. Didn't I say this girl is the true? I know what to talk nice about. Too. Yes, yes. So I told you, I don't even know what else to say. Like, I'm speechless. I got to get the people familiar with Kanye I, Bailey. I'm glad you're here. My gosh. I told you. you that she's something to look out for. You know, and I appreciate you coming and Thank taking you. the time out to speak about your life about me. We got to do this again. Of course. And you know what? I of want course. you to do that mixtape, album, EP, whatever y'all want to call I it. definitely Because I think that it'll be so hard for these streets right I now. Definitely, I definitely. I want to make sure need. it's right because when I do stuff and I rush it, I give people a date and they don't come. And I know I disappoint my fans or people that be waiting for it and that they stop looking for it. So I well, want to stop believe, doing that. I believe like, you're going to take this I'm still waiting for the In the Trap video, the song y'all was playing. It's been done, and I'm waiting for it to be sent to me so I can put it out. Well, I want to hear and see more from you. Ladies.